Hi, in this video, we'll be continuing our Node-RED series and as a part of the second episode, we're going to learn about how to install external node palettes in Node-RED, how to use dashboard by using the dashboard node palettes, of course. After that, we'll be learning how to use or interface DST11 sensor, that's the temperature humidity sensor, along with Node-RED. And in the end, we're going to make our own demo project of controlling LEDs as well as monitoring temperature and humidity sensors data on Node-RED dashboard that we'll be making completely from scratch. So yeah, this is all we're going to learn as a part of the second episode. So let's get started. Now before starting the episode, let me give you the glimpse about the series. So in this series, we'll be starting with Node-RED from very basics and we'll be heading towards making our own complete home automation system using Node-RED from scratch. So now if you are interested in making that home automation system from scratch using Node-RED or if you are interested in learning about Node-RED in very much detailed and interesting manner, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out the notification of all the episodes upcoming on this channel. Now that being said, let us start with the second episode. So in the first episode, we already discussed that we can install external node palettes for different different purposes inside Node-RED. So now in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that by installing the Node-RED dashboard node palettes. So for that, just open up the Node-RED web interface. And now to install any new palette, you need to just click here and just click on manage palettes. Here, click on install. And here you can search for whatever node palettes you want to install. In our case, we want to install the dashboard node palette. So I will write as node hyphen red hyphen dashboard. Okay. So you need to install this particular node palette, which in my case is already installed. Okay. You just need to click on the install button and just wait for a few seconds and it will automatically install on your, you know, node red web interface. After doing that, click on close. So as soon as you do this, or as soon as you install the new node palettes, the new node palettes or nodes automatically appears on the left hand side. As you can see here under the dashboard section, I got different, different kind of nodes for different, different purposes. Okay. So this is how you can install external node palettes for different, different purposes on node red. Now, those who have watched the first episode of this series must already be knowing that we created a small demo project of controlling LEDs on Raspberry Pi using the Node-RED web interface. But in that method, we were not having any user interface uh, like switches and buttons and uh, sensor gauge and proper label and stuff like that. We were not having that proper user interface. So to make our front end of our project in Node-RED, we are going to use the dashboard nodes. Now, what is this front end and back end? Let me tell you in a very simple manner. Front end is whatever we see, uh, whatever a user sees, okay? Maybe it's a website that we are surfing, maybe it's an application that you're using. Everything that you see and touching and you're interacting with is considered as a front end of that particular software or particular application. And talking about the back end, then back end is everything that contains the logic, that contains the codes and everything is considered as a back end. So whatever we are doing inside this workspace can be considered as a back end of our system. And to make the front end, we're going to use the Node-RED dashboard nodes. So let's see how to use it. So first of all, I'll drag and drop this switch node uh, into the workspace. Okay. So here is a basic switch uh, that like on and off switch. Okay. Now we need to configure this switch for that double click on it. Okay. So here first we need to create the group. So in the dashboard nodes, we have to create groups and tabs. Okay. Now what is groups and tabs? So tabs can be considered as a separate page. Uh, for example, you need to create a, like dashboard for your living room, for your bedroom, for your kitchen. So every every room can be considered as a single tab. Okay. And what is group? So inside a particular tab, we have several different kinds of appliances, maybe our AC, maybe our fan, maybe our temperature sensor. So everything inside that particular room can be considered as a group. Okay. So these two terms uh, are necessary for using the node red uh, dashboard nodes, but things will get more clear as soon as we start using these things. Okay. So first of all, as we don't have any group, we need to create a new group for that. Click on this pencil icon. Name the group. Uh, I will name it as uh, my studio. Okay. So now we need to create a tab. Now I already created two tabs, but let me show you how to create a new. Okay. So you need to click on this add new UI tab and click on the pencil icon. Give it a name. I will name it as studio uh, controls. As this is a switch, so switch has a purpose of controlling the things. So I just named as studio underscore control. Click on add. Click on add click on done. 
and that's it we have configured the groups and tabs for this particular switch okay now we just need to click on the deploy button so we successfully deployed this much uh, logic on our node red now the question is how to see the dashboard now for that what you do is you just need to open a new tab go to the same local ip address of your raspberry pi board which in my case is 192.168.15.95 colon 1880 that's the port number slash you have to write ui as soon as you request this link you'll get the node red dashboard let's see how it looks okay so here's the node red dashboard as you can see the uh, studio control is one of the tab and inside that i have a group called my studio in which i do have only one single switch using which i can just turn it on and turn it off so a true or false data will be sent okay so this is a user interface a dashboard of a node red here you can change a couple of things like you can change the theme of this dashboard by so for configuring the dashboard you need to click on this icon and go to dashboard okay so here you can just change a couple of things just like you can change the theme of that dashboard right now the theme is set to dark i can change it to light and let's just deploy it and see how the light theme looks so here is the light version of this theme similarly you can you know configure your custom theme as well like a custom colors for every elements that you put on the dashboard so here are a couple of things that you can change but uh, we won't be going to deep about this particular thing as we have a target to make a home automation system now similarly to switch we can add other nodes as well let's take the example of this gauge node okay as soon as i drag and drop the gauge node i will double click on it i'll again add a new ui group here let's just click on this uh, pencil icon i will name the group as uh, my studio and i'll add a new tab which i'll name it as studio underscore sensor okay that's it click on add click on add and click on done let me just deploy this and if i open the dashboard now as you can see i do have two options one is the studio control and one is the studio sensor and under studio sensor i have this gauge on which we i can you know monitor the sensors data so similarly you can create multiple tabs and inside the single tab you can add a group in which there are a couple of appliances and sensors data and everything and stuff like that it totally depends on your imagination like how you want your dashboard to look like so yeah, that was all about the basic introduction about how to use node red dashboard. Okay, but wait, I'll be using the dashboard to create our own demo project at the end of the video. So just stay tuned. Now, before moving on to the making our own demo project, let's first see how to interface the DHT11 sensor with node red. So DHT11 is a sensor model from which we can get the temperature and humidity data. Now, let me show you how to use it with the node red. For that, you need to add a dedicated node for DHT11. And how to do that, we already discussed. Let's just repeat the steps. Just click here, go to Manage Palettes, click on Install. Here, just type as DHT11. So in my case, I have already installed this particular node. You need to just click on the Install button and you are good to go. After that, just click on the Close button. So after you install this DHT11 you know, node palette, a new node will appear under the Raspberry Pi section which says RPI DHT22. So we have two versions of this DHT sensor, DHT11 and DHT22. So don't worry, you can use DHT11 in this as well, okay? So now let's see how to use it. For that, just drag and drop this node uh, here. Double click on it. Here, just change the sensor that you have. In my case, I'm having the DHT11 sensor, so I will select this. I'll change the pin numbering to BCM GPIO and here I will select the pin number as 4 as I have connected the DHT sensor with GPIO 4 of my Raspberry Pi board. And that's it. You can just name it if you want. I will name it as DHT11. That's it. Just click on the done button. Now on the input side, I will add a node called inject. Okay. I'll connect this inject node with the DHT11. Okay, so as soon as you press the button, this DHT uh, node will get signal and it will push the data in the output. Let's just create a, let's just connect a debug node to visualize the output. So yeah, so this is a basic configuration to get that census data. And let's just deploy this code and let's see if we are getting the data or not. Let's just click on the deploy button. Okay, so I'll go to this debug uh, uh, option and let's just give the signal with this inject module. Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting the data as 30. So this 30 reveals the 30 degree Celsius temperature currently at my studio. But we didn't get the data of humidity. So how to get that? For that, you just need to click on the message.payload uh, node and just change this message.payload to complete message object, okay? Click on done. So what was happening? 
So previously this debug node was getting the data of only message dot payload. But right now we change to get the complete message coming from that particular node. So that's the only change we did here. Let's just click on the deploy button. So now if I inject this, as you can see, I got a couple of data which includes the payload, which is 27 degrees Celsius, that's the temperature, the topic, the humidity value, which is 42 percentage. Okay, and there are a couple of other things. Okay, so we got a complete data from this DHT11 node. Okay, so that's the thing. Now one question remains is, how we can get the separate humidity data and separate temperature data from the single node. How to do that? For that, we will be using a very powerful node in Node-RED and that is the function node. Let's see how to use it. So for that, I'll drag and drop this function node here. I'll delete this connection and I will connect DHT11 with the function node. Okay. So this function node will be separating the temperature data and similarly I'll add another function node which will be separating the humidity data. So yes, yeah, so we successfully added two functions. Let's just try to configure the humidity function first. Okay, so double click on this. So let's first name this function as humidity data. Okay, so here we have a, what you can say, code editor you can say in which we can write the code in JavaScript that we already discussed previously. So there is only one line written as return message. Now, one thing you need to remember while using Node-RED is the data transfer between each node is stored inside the message object. And the main data like transfer from one node to another node is stored in message dot payload. Okay, that's the main data. So now the question is how we can separate this humidity data from the message object, like the collection of data we are having, how we can separate the one data from it. For that, what I can, what I will do is as I already told, the main data transferred is in the format of message.payload. So what we'll do, we will manipulate that variable and store the humidity value inside it. Now, how to do that? Let me show you. First of all, I will write as message.payload. Consider it as a variable. Okay. So in this variable, we need to store the data that we want. Okay. As I already stored, message.payload is the main, uh, we can say, variable you can consider in which the data is stored. So what I will do, I will change this message.payload to message.payload humidity okay you just need to be careful with the uh characters okay i'll put the semicolon so what we did here is we just you know transfer the data of message.humidity to the main data that is message.payload and that whole object is returned to another node okay let's just click on done if i connect this to this debug node and it changed it to only message.payload okay so now I should get the humidity value at the output, the only humidity value in the output. Let us see if it is happening or not. Click on deploy button and let us inject the data. Great. So we got only humidity data that is a 43 percentage currently at my studio. So this is how you can filter the data. So similarly, let's filter the temperature sensors data. Well, the temperature sensor data is very simple. It's because the temperature sensor is stored inside the message dot payload by default. Okay. So if I just put this function as it is, or if I don't put this function, then also I'll be getting the temperature data only. Let me show you. I'll just name this function as temperature data. So as the temperature data is stored in the payload function, we are returning the message as it is. We are not manipulating that variables. Okay. Just click on done. And if I add another debug node and connect it with this, so now if I so now if I click on deploy button, I should get the temperature and humidity data separately. Let's just see. Let me inject here. Okay, as you can see, first is the temperature data, which is 28 degrees Celsius, and second is the humidity data, which is 41 percentage, and we got the data separately. So this is how you can use the DHT11 sensor using Node-RED with the help of this DHT11 node. I hope you got the basic idea about how to use this DHT node, as well as how to use the function node as well. So now let us move on to the last part of this episode and that is to make a demo project of controlling LEDs as well as monitoring sensors data using Node-RED dashboard. Let's just jump on to how to make it. So first of all, I'll keep this uh, flow as it is and along with that I will add a gauge uh, uh, node here. Okay, and I will connect it with the humidity data and I'll add another gauge which will be getting connected to the temperature data. Let us configure both the gauges. Now double click on it. So here the sensors data will go to studio sensor, okay? Because it is a sensor data, so I will go to, uh, so I will move it to studio sensor tab, click here, okay? I can give the label if I want, I will name it as uh, temperature. 
okay uh, units can be degrees celsius okay and minimum to maximum range so maximum range will be 100 so 0 to 100 is okay for my uh, particular region okay and that's it uh, and uh, let us name it as temperature monitor that's it just click on the done button similarly i'll double click on this gauge and again select studio sensor tab label it as humidity units will be percentage values will be 0 to 100 it's okay and humidity meter that's it click on the done button so this is how we have created two separate uh, uh, you know gauges for monitoring the temperature sensors and humidity sensors data similarly i'll add uh, the switch node from the dashboard node palette because we also want to control the ld on a raspberry pi board okay and after that i'll be also adding this raspberry pi gpio out okay so first of all let us configure the raspberry pi gpio out node double click on it uh, this time i'll select the pin as uh, 26 because I have connected the LED on the GPIO 26. Okay, it's a digital output. I can name it here as LED. That's perfectly fine for me. Click on the done button. I'll connect both switch node and the LED node. Double click on the switch node. I'll select the studio control tab only because it's a control option. Switch is obviously a control option. I'll name it as LED control or other LED is okay for me. And name will be LED control. Great. Click on the done button. Okay, so now I'll change this timestamp uh, to a repeat mode. For that, double click on it. I'll make it repeat uh, in the interval of every five seconds. That is completely fine. Click on done. So every five seconds, the new data will be injected and we are able to visualize new data on our dashboard. So yeah, I think we have completely uh, made a complete flow for visualizing the data as well as controlling the LED on our Raspberry Pi board. So now is the time to deploy this flow and let us see this project in action. I got a bit loud. I'm sorry. Let us deploy it. Let us open the dashboard and refresh it. Okay, so first of all, we have a LED switch and under the studio sensor, we have humidity and temperature. So as you can see, we got the temperature is 28 degrees Celsius and humidity is 38 percentage, which will be changed after every five seconds on this dashboard. This looks really very nice. Okay, this is really very professional. Let us see this uh, studio control. Let me open up the camera on my smartphone just to show you that if it is working or not. Okay, so I'll turn on this camera. Okay, so I'll turn on the LED. Okay, it's already on. Let me just turn it off. Okay, it got turned off. So on, off, on, off, on, off. And along with that, we are also getting the census data in parallel. So yeah, everything is working completely fine. And using this, we can actually make a home automation system using Raspberry Pi. We can connect multiple sensors on it. We can connect multiple relays on it. And we are already made a complete dashboard for you know controlling all the things and visualizing all the things in our home automation on a smart home so yeah we are already a step closer to that but this is not our end point we are not going to use raspberry pi board uh, for controlling every appliances we're going to use raspberry pi board as a hub or as a center point or as a broker you can say while all the clients will be like different models that will be seen in the future episodes uh on, on that client model we'll be having sensors and we'll be having the relays and stuff like that so yeah that's uh, uh the thing that we are going to make in future uh so if that sounds interesting to you make sure you do subscribe the channel uh so that you don't miss out any like, notification of any of the episodes like coming up for this node red series so yeah that was all about the second episode of this node red series i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned so many new things how out of it just let me know what new things you learned from it so that's the feedback which i want let me know what you have learned from this particular episode just let me know in the comments of the video and if you find this video interesting useful a like will be really very helpful because you like if you like the video the youtube will come to know this video is completely great and it will share this video automatically to other viewers out there in the world so do like it and comment your like what new things you have learned that being said end this video here subscribe my channel if you haven't already and now just wait for my next video in the next explore learn share with me techie sms